Hello, nice to see all of you. I don't see many of you, the lights are pretty bright, but... So, this is what I'm going to be talking about today. It's been a long journey to get here. 15 years ago, I got the diagnosis for MS, multiple sclerosis, and even before that, I had asthma and all sorts of stuff. And it's like yesterday at the after party, I had a chat with Jaro Willard. He said that we are increasingly moving to society where we are not so much valued by how much money we make, although that is still important, but about what, what kind of the quality of the contribution that we make to society. So today I want to contribute my best ideas, just like so many people have done here. It's so great to be here because uh, for me, the reason that I was so ill and I had all these diagnoses was that there's so much politics, there's so much dirty stuff going on behind the scenes in the food industry, and that's why we are <laughs> eating that kind of food a lot. And the media, the officials, nobody really likes, gives it to you straight the, the way it is. And this is the way I see it. So many people ask me, uh, how did you heal yourself? Like, uh, you must have a very, very strict diet. Uh, did you follow this diet or that diet? I'm always, no, no, no. I don't have any diet. Th this is my diet. Uh, I, I eat that stuff, so I don't ever crave that stuff. And, and that's really so simple. That's the only point I want to drive home today. I hope that everybody gets this, because uh, what I've seen throughout the years is that uh, so many people get so much knowledge from different places and they do this biohack or that diet or stuff like that, but stay, they still don't know how to upgrade the, the candy bar that they're eating or something. So that's what we're talking about today. And I hope that everybody goes home knowing that you don't have to eat anything unhealthy because the better version that already exists actually tastes much better. Uh, <laughs> this is... We have this supermarket survival project and we, our advertising is that we make real food advertisements and that's how we kind of promote our e-course and, and such. And it's so funny, like people oftentimes they're like, I've never seen an advertisement li like this. It's like it's good for your eyes and you know, all sorts of health claims. These are the kinds of advertisements that we should be seeing. But of course there's not that much money in selling mangoes. But there's a lot of contribution, and there's a lot of quality in there. Yeah, there, there's, there's, there's the real weight loss pill. It, it doesn't have to be more complicated than that. Uh, it was a rainy day, and then I wanted to make it more positive, so I had an ice cream. Ice cream is supposed to be bad for you, but like a lot of biohackers know nowadays, you can make ice cream or anything from real high-quality ingredients. This is a Gudio Cafe, which is a high-quality cafe here in Helsinki, and they put some real <laughs> organic rose petals on top of the raw ice cream made from superfood ingredients. So this is how I ate, at least some of the time. Yeah, this is the real candy. I want to see the big media talk like this. My, my point is that, and my experience is that we, we don't need all these health problems. If we just laid it out like this, it, that would be it. There's Temu Arena in there, and, and there's Tunna from, from Mad Ventures, Mad Cook. And uh, we went to do some supermarket survivalism. And it's a good picture because uh, I get asked a lot about what is real food? What do you mean when you say real food? And wh what is like not real food? And where do you draw the line? I feel it's actually quite simple. And you can say it quite clearly that uh, real food has a, like a long tail of all sorts of nutrients in there. The, the better you, uh, or the closer you study, the more you find. Uh, probably in that letters or something, there's probably hundreds of thousands of different constituents. And then the fake food that we have nowadays, uh, even if you put some artificial nutrients in there, let's say you put some vitamin C in that candy, it's still not going to make it like truly nutritious or truly real. 
So, um, the big companies nowadays, uh, they see that people don't like the fake food so much anymore. So, they, uh, they try to sort of greenwash things. And then we have this like really low quality food there. And then they try to rebrand it. <laughs> like it's, it's not a casserole, it's a hug casserole. So uh, that kind of makes me feel bad because I know how bad it feels to get all the negative health effects of eating that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, uh, so many of us kind of know that when we really put some effort into it and we cook our food home, that's not the most problematic part of our diet. Uh, what we usually don't notice is that we all actually snack a lot. Uh, th there are times when we want to eat really healthy, but then there are times when we just want to enjoy. And I think that's the biggest leverage. Whenever we can upgrade what we eat when we don't even think about it. When we just want to treat, when we just want something easy, something that tastes good and makes us feel better. Uh, mm, if you can find ways to upgrade those, then, then we can take our eating from like, like the worst kind of, let's say, like a cake made from white flour, white sugar, all of that to where it's made from like really nutrient dense, real ingredients. And that's, I think that's what has helped me the most because I used to try not to eat pizza and it's kind of like, don't think about the pink elephant and you already thought about pink elephant. So if I try not to eat pizza, it makes me think about pizza. And when I'm thinking about pizza, of course I get a craving for pizza. So maybe like around 2006, I kind of had, many times I had my last pizza, kind of like people have their last smoke, last cigarette. And uh, it was a, like, I, I still see so many people trying not to eat something and then sooner or later they eat that and then they kind of hate themselves for it. And uh, yeah, so. For me, nowadays, there's nothing that I can, can not eat. Uh, I, I can eat cakes, I can eat candies, whatever. Uh, like 10 years ago, it was more difficult because in many situations, you could only find something made from white flour and white sugar and uh, a artificial additives and that kind of stuff. But nowadays, more and more people are starting to appreciate the quality of their food. And that's why we have better options nowadays. I like, for example, here, everything you can, uh, you have a huge selection of everything that you might crave, and everything is upgraded. So this is kind of the future in many ways. Yeah, so I talked with a, with a person who was selling, uh, among other things, these pumpkin seeds, and she told me that uh, she, she cannot say to her customers that there would be anything different with this. And that's kind of funny because you can see that there's a difference and you can taste the difference. Uh, this one is from China and this one is from Austria. And there's a huge, huge difference in, the, in nutrition and all of that. But like the official view and the kind of legalistic view is that there shouldn't be any difference. And if you're selling those, you cannot really talk about it. So there's one benefit to this, it's cheaper. So a lot of people go for this and they cannot really get the information that you should go for this. You should pay a little bit more for a lot more nutrition. And there's a diagram from, like this is maybe closer to the potato that we're eating. The C-reactive protein levels, the inflammation levels in the body go up when the food is like really nutrient dense. People ask me all the time, uh, should I eat potatoes? What do you think about potatoes? Are potatoes good? And like Jako Halmetoja would probably say, that's a, that would be a dualistic question. Uh, I cannot really answer, and even science cannot really answer those types of questions. That's very interesting. Uh, 
a lot of times we say that we have these studies, we have this science saying that everybody should, for example, mm, let's say, eat potatoes or maybe not eat potatoes or everybody should drink milk. And that's not something that science can even theoretically answer because, like for example, there are different kinds of potatoes and of course there are different kinds of people and there are like a million other <laughs> variables that will affect the answer. And the way our science works nowadays, uh, we usually don't control for quality. Uh, we just study something. For example, uh, we want to know that is meat good for you. Then we come up with a study uh, saying that, uh, let's say that, let's see, uh, one group of, group of people eats a lot of meat and the other group doesn't. And then we measure uh, one variable, let's say that uh, how much cancer do, do they get or something. And then we find out that the group that eats more meat gets maybe more cancer. But we don't know what quality of meat they ate. Uh, maybe it was some other factors in there. So, but especially I, I would like to see the kind of science that would compare different quality of meat. But that's a little bit difficult for science because quality is not just one thing. It's never just one thing. It's always about so many things. Uh, I think we people are actually much better about answering what is good quality than science. Uh, like for example, if you want to know what's good wine, you would probably ask somebody who's like really, really into wine, and they would probably give you a better answer than a study that only measures one thing. Let's say that the study measures, uh, compares different wines with each other, and then there's just, usually there's just one criteria in science, usually. It's kind of funny, but usually there is. So uh, they would measure, let's say, the histamine levels or the antioxidant levels or, or something, just, just one level, and then they put it in order. But it's kind of like, what's a good symphony? It's not just how loud it is. It's not just how many people are playing it. It's not just, it's never just one thing. It's, it's a whole. And food is like that. Health is like that. So, but we can find like really good correlations when we really look for it. When you're eating like really high quality, fresh, nutrient dense food, kind of like, like this as compared to that. And for me, uh, like 2000, around 2004, I found out that every chronic disease, which I had <laughs> my share of, they are, they always, there's a component of inflammation there. And the first thing would be to get that inflammation down. So uh, this is how you get it down. It's not about what diet you're on. It's not about whether you eat potatoes or not. It's, I think the, the most important thing is about what quality potatoes you eat. And then uh, it, it kind of makes me mad sometimes that in the official nutrition science world, there's still no, dif no difference between fresh and not fresh food. In Finland, we have a lot of these kinds of salads where they are already chopped and they are exposed to oxygen a lot and that kind of stuff. And uh, in Finland, we say that people should eat more vegetables because vegetables are good for you. But again, science cannot really say whether something is good for you because there's a lot of variety within that cat category. So. A lot of people in Finland, they eat the kinds of vegetables that don't taste very good. And when we try to eat healthy, we try to eat the vegetables. And then maybe when we just want to feel happy, we maybe eat something not so good. But um, many people, when they like grow their own vegetables or something, it's like, whoa, this is actually good. So when the quality is high, it diminishes your inflammation levels, but it also makes you want to eat the food. So that's a really good double benefit. And we should talk more about that. Okay, so uh, these are the ideas that really like helped me most. Uh, 2006, around there, I, I did my best not to eat the bad food, and I tried to eat the good food. I had like a growing, ever-growing lists of the things that I should avoid and then the things that I should do more of. Quite simple, but it took a lot out of me. I wasn't able to 
focus so much on other things that I was supposed to be doing in my life because I had to think about what to eat and what not to eat. So uh, I think it was from David Wolf that I first heard the idea that maybe you can just forget the bad stuff and you can just add in the good stuff. Uh, and then, then also, once I realized this stuff, I, like th this w was never and would never be a problem for me again because we have this. And for some people, initially, this doesn't taste better, but once you get used to it, it, it does. That's what we found out, like with so many people throughout the years, again and again, that let's say somebody is buying uh, artificial kind of uh, blueberry soup uh, because it tastes good to them, but also because we feel, and I used to feel, that professional people, of course, do and know everything better than me. So if somebody, like a big company, has made the product, it must be better than what I can make at home. But once I realized these things, I could buy just the real blueberries and maybe like a real honey or something. And after a while, it would taste better. And, and then I would, I would like never have a craving again for that artificial stuff. It's so funny. And the artificial food oftentimes, like this, or, or like a r really low quality candy or chocolate or something, uh, it, it doesn't really satisfy you because you are missing the long tail of the nutrients that are supposed to be there and, and that your body kind of expects to get but doesn't really get. So a lot of times people ask me, uh, how much should, should I eat? How should I control the portion sizes? But when you move to the better options, your body actually does that for you as well. When the body gets the long tail of nutrients, everything that's supposed to be there, then, for example, with, let's say that you buy not an artificial can candy, but like a pineapple, a real whole pineapple, and it tastes so good, ridiculously good, and you're like, oh man, like, I'm so going to overeat this. And then maybe you're, you're halfway through to the pineapple, and it actually doesn't taste that good. But let's say you still keep eating because you don't even pay attention, because we're not used to paying attention to how we actually feel about the food that we eat. Uh, you still try to eat more, and then it actually starts kind of burning you. I've also had the experience with like, for example, I go to the blueberry forest at like June when they get the first blueberries and it tastes so rid ridiculously good and I'm like so gonna over it. And then after a while I'm like, are these the same blueberries? Because the taste actually changes. Uh, you don't get that taste change with the artificial food, but we have a built-in mechanism just like every animal does. They, they don't control their portion sizes. They don't over it because what you have a craving for, you have a reason to crave that thing. And then once you get what you're supposed to get from that, then you don't crave that anymore. And that's so genius. That's why I've been able, like for, for the past uh, 10 years, I've been able to do really good, cool things with my life, like the kind of thing that I never thought possible, really, uh, because I don't have to think about food. Uh, I know that, I, I saw it, that many people who have made more money and who have had success in their lives, they used to be not very healthy because they also didn't have time to think about food that much. So they would just grab something and the something used to be something like totally nutrient poor. Uh, and when you eat that kind of food, you don't really get satisfied and then they would overeat. But even if they would control their portion sizes, they still wouldn't get the nutrition so, and they would still get the high inflammation levels and all of that. So I'm just so happy that nowadays we have these kinds of options, even like in the smallest st stores. And like so many people, so many people here have worked so hard, so long that, that we can, that in the future, we don't have to think about food anymore. Like that, that you can go anywhere and anything that you crave in that moment, you can have the upgraded version. I'm so looking forward to that and I will keep on working for that as long as it takes, and then some. Yeah. This is kind of the same idea as, as the previous one. But you, you can, okay, uh, let's say that uh, I'm craving ice cream. I can upgrade, uh, I can 
oh, upgrade the quality of the ice cream easily, like by buying organic ice cream. Or I can replace it something with something that's not really ice cream, but kind of satisfies the same cravings or kind of contains the same elements. Like, for example, I would go to the store, I would crave for ice cream, and then I would just buy uh, coconut cream or cream and blueberries and honey. Because what's in an ice cream? Uh, there's, it's cold, so you get the coldness from the frozen berries. And then uh, you have some fats in there, so you put some fats and then some sweetness. And then maybe some, some colors and, and that kind of stuff, uh, flavors that you get from the berries also. So I would kind of make my own kind of versions that I would replace them with. Or, or you can like, you could uh, buy better, uh, better soda or you can replace it with something that kind of serves the same purpose and fulfills the same craving, even though the name is not soda, it's coconut water. But I think this is, this is the easiest. Like you can make, you can have the same foods, you don't have to think about it. You can have candy, but nowadays in the stores they actually have organic candy. So that's a step in the right direction. Uh, our nutrition, our diet, whatever, will never be perfect. And we kind of shouldn't aim for that. We should aim for better, not perfect, but better. And we should do that in a way that, that's very, uh, that doesn't go against our nature. Um, we want to go toward more natural foods, but I also want to, in the way of getting there, I want to use uh, methods that are natural, that, are, that don't go against our nature. Our nature wants, let's say that my nature wants, uh, well, whatever, this right now. My nature doesn't want salad at that moment. So even if the salad is like more natural maybe, uh, it's kind of, in a way it's unnatural to just keep going against our cravings because it's not just our sinful nature or anything like that. Maybe a little bit, maybe I'm a lazy person or something, but I believe that our cravings are innately good, like our own nature is good, so I wouldn't want to go against that, my kind of inner wisdom all the time. I want to give my body what it craves, what it wants at the moment, so, yeah. And yeah, this is the, this is the idea that kind of changed my life, that, that I really, I don't, uh, yeah, so many people ask me that, I'm in this one situation, like I eat good almost every time, but then there's this one situation where I'm at this social situation and people are offering me this and that. And I always tell them nowadays that uh, even if you kind of won that certain situation, it doesn't really change your life. What changes your life in the long run is that instead of this diet thinking where we're just restricting our options and kind of going against our own nature, uh, you actually upgrade the quality, you, you, like you increase the variety of the good quality stuff in your life. That's kind of what really changes our life in the long run. You're more and more satisfied with that huge vari variety, ever increasing variety of awesome stuff that you can treat your body with. And then you're less and less interested in the bad stuff. And then when there's this one situation that you still get a craving for that candy or that not so good quality cake, it doesn't matter at all. And the, this is the, the vision that a lot of people are working for right now. That uh, nowadays, we have a lot of big companies spending a lot of money trying to get us to eat bad food. And like in, in today's world and in the social media, that's, that's not very good strategy. Like for example, uh, this company here is trying to make us eat low quality food and trying to kind of greenwash it with some kind of love intentions, whatever. And they don't get a good reaction in the social media. Like, but when, when the vision, when the intention is actually good, that's what will give you much more like viral marketing and kind of free publicity also. It's much cooler to talk about cool stuff than uh, not so real stuff. So uh, I think right now we actually have time for, for questions, if you have any.
because we were supposed to talk about how to survive the modern grocery store, because there are a lot of crappy products there. A lot of, a lot of people tell me that if that product is really good quality, then it should be in the supermarkets. But oftentimes, the products that get the best space in there are not so good quality, but they're like scalable and they are like easy for the in terms of the logistics and usually the price is here and the quality of ingredients is here and then there's the space between uh, so uh, if you want to ask anything about like how to upgrade this or that so go ahead hi thanks uh, for the presentation it was very good uh, I was wondering do you have a process which uh, could help regular Joe to, to do what you have done. Uh, for example, uh, is it better to make a real good a big effort at once or move step by step? And is it uh, an idea to hmm. like make a list of the bad stuff and how you can replace it with hmm. good stuff? Yeah. What we found out throughout the years is that always it works the best to go through, through those ideas, which means that just adding something good and then if it really works for you, then you want something more. But it has to be something that doesn't really, crea uh, doesn't really need uh, take effort from your part. Because I think that health should work even without effort. That sounds kind of, kind of silly, but that's how I feel. Because, I don't know, I have a lot of things to do in my life to pay attention to. And if health is something that kind of costs me my precious attention, then I don't know. It's something that it's always like I kind of pay a price for it. But if it's something that, like for example, a really good quality, really good tasting green smoothie, for example, I actually crave that. And I, I want to make it tomorrow again. And I'm like uh, stoked to get up from the bed and go make my something really good, like for example, a uh, warrior coffee or something. I think that's that's the way you should start, and you should start with one thing, of course, because you can do only one thing at a time. You can learn something new every week or even every day. Uh, and I think you should set the bar high, so that if, if it's not fun, if it's not something that you want to do, go for the next thing and try different things, try different upgrades, try different add-ons, and see what works for you. I also have a formal process. Uh, it's only in Finnish language right now, unfortunately. Supermarket Survival e-course. It's, it's on sale right now. So uh, some people can look into that also. Hmm. Hi, a bit off topic, but you said that uh, you reversed or you're, you could cure your MS. Uh, and I was wondering if you are on any of the medications and have you been able to inspire others with MS to uh, do the same as you have done? Yeah, great question. Uh, I never took any of those medications. There was a lot of pressure from relatives and a lot of people in the medical field who said that you should start the medications. I never did. Uh, I, get some, I do get some message from some people who have followed my stuff throughout the years and who have healed from their MS. When I started out, I couldn't find any examples and it was kind of scary, but nowadays there are many in Finland and abroad. That's really cool. I think pretty much every time I post about MS in the internet somewhere, a lot of people comment that, hey, I also healed mine or that uh, mine used to be really bad and now it's going in the right direction. So. I don't care what the name of the condition, when you get better nutrition in your body and when you get it in a way that doesn't stress you, that actually liberates you, of course you're going to feel better. That's just like, how can you argue that? I think we have time for one more if you have uh, there. Okay, thank you for a really nice talk. Uh, I have uh, pre-diabetic values always, and I still love my dark chocolate. So do you think it would be better to eat uh, dark chocolate with stevia or dark chocolate with just very little sugar? This is a controversial idea, but this is something that I've experienced and I definitely believe that you should eliminate white sugar. Uh, not eliminate, you can replace it with better things. If I get Otherwise, high-quality chocolate, 
that has some white sugar. I, oh, it, it makes me feel very jittery. But the same chocolate bar with some kind of better sugar, uh, like a cane sugar or coconut sugar or something, and you can get that nowadays. It, it's so much better. I, I, would, I would really uh, look into what sugar is in there. And if it's like completely refined, then no. But if it's something better, it actually tastes better and it makes me feel a lot better. Okay, thanks. We're out of time. Cool. This is great. <laughs>